Today, we're going to be talking about deploying an image classification model to the OpenMV camera. Edge Impulse is the world's leading embedded machine learning platform. It helps you build a full end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline to accomplish a variety of machine learning tasks from regression to vibration and sound classification to object detection and predictive maintenance. You can import data from any sensor and deploy your model to nearly any device. You maintain control of the data and firmware the whole time. The Edge Impulse Studio is an online platform that handles everything, including collecting data from your embedded sensors, labeling the data, performing any pre-processing calculations, and training machine learning models. This end-to-end -end project is called an impulse. You can then test your impulse on live data with a connected sensor. After, the studio will guide you through the process of creating firmware or a library that will run your impulse on any number of platforms. This includes your pre-processing code, trained neural network, and any anomaly detection code you may have so that you can perform inference locally without an internet connection. If you're not familiar with it, the OpenMV is a complete computer vision system. It's a dev board that contains a camera module attached to a microcontroller. And in the case of our H7 variants, that microcontroller is an STM32H7. You can use MicroPython to program it, and there's also a special IDE that allows you to code in MicroPython, as well as give you feedback about what the camera module is seeing and doing. There are a few versions available, and the ones I recommend for working with this demo are the OpenMV H7, H7R2, or the H7+. Plus. We're going to start this demo with an existing project. If you watched the micro session that involved creating a data set and augmenting it to train an image classifier, that's the project we're going to start with. So if you head to studio.edgeimpulse.com slash public slash 36800 slash latest, you can see the public version of that project that I put here. Create an account on Edge Impulse if you have not done so, and you will want to click clone this project. Give this project a name, and I'm going to add a demo behind this so we know that this is our demo project, and wait a moment while that project is cloned into your account. Once your project has been cloned, you should be able to make changes in that project, and you can see here is the name of this newly cloned project, or I suppose Fort Project. If you did not watch that micro session, I highly recommend going into data acquisition and you can get an idea of the different types of images we are trying to classify. We are trying to identify among different electronic components. So we have a diode, we have a capacitor. We can click on that and get an idea of what that looks like. There's also data augmentation going on where we've done things like added noise, moved the images around, rotated them and so forth. We have a resistor, capacitor, diode, LED. You can get different versions of that LED. There we go. And background, which is nothing. This is not doing object detection. We don't care where this component appears. We just want to know which component is taking up that entire frame. Feel free to check out the model testing results. You can see we're getting close to 97%. And we're going to go to deployment once we're happy with that whole model. Click Open MV Library and click Build. Wait a moment while that builds the model for you, creates the library, and allows you to download it. You can click on Learn How to Integrate This Library if you'd like to read the documentation, but I'm going to show you that here. Close out of that tab and bring up your downloads folder. Here is our OpenMV library that we just downloaded. Let's extract it. Go in here and you should see example code, which we will load into the OpenMV IDE. Labels, which is just a list of classes from our project. Note that they are listed in alphabetical order. So background, capacitor, diode, LED, and resistor. That order will matter when we go to figure out our inference results. And finally, the trained.tflight file. This might also be a .light file. 
Either way, just make a note of what the model file is called because we will need to import that in our code. Plug in your OpenMV camera and it should enumerate as a mass storage device. We will need the labels.txt and the trained.tf light file to live on that mass storage device or the flash space of our OpenMV. So let's copy those. We will go to that drive, paste them in. I already have them in here, so feel free to replace. You can see I've copied those two files in. Main.py is something that will run automatically on the OpenMV, but we're not gonna do that right now. If you have not done so already, you will also need to download the OpenMV IDE. So head to openmv.io, go to download, scroll down and install the OpenMV IDE for your particular operating system. Once you have done that, you can open the IDE and it will look something like this. There will likely be a hello world example that comes up. Feel free to run that, but what we care about is that example code. So let's go to our downloads. We're going to go to the component CNN augmented demo, and we're gonna open that classification.py. This is a demo code or a demo program that was created by Edge Impulse for us and feel free to look through this code. You can see that we set up the camera. We set it to capture 240 by 240 pixels, or rather the camera itself captures 320 by 240, and then we slice out the, and then we slice out a 240 by 240 window to create this square frame. And you're looking at my desk right here. We're also capturing it in RGB 565, but that will get converted to grayscale as needed. In this section, you can see where we load the model. Here's that file name, trained.tflight. You can also see it here. This is what gets loaded in and it allocates the buffers in order to do inference. We then read labels.txt and these are the two files that have to be on board on the flash memory of the OpenMV. That's how these get read in with this open command. It reads in each line strips off the new line characters and that's how we end up with the class labels. You do not want to change the ordering of those labels because the model file will spit out inference results in a very particular order that lines up with those class labels in alphabetical order. So I highly recommend not modifying either of those .tflight or labels.txt files. From there, we get to our main while loop an image is captured from the sensor, and then we call net.classify. This is the TF Lite library that's supported on the OpenMV, where it takes that image file in, does any sort of scaling as necessary, and it will also try to do inference in multiple windows if you let it, but for now we're just gonna do inference on the entire captured window, plus a little bit of scaling. From there, we get our inference results as object.output. Object comes from these. You might get multiple objects if multiple windows fit within your big window, but that should not be the case for us. It should just be that one window that's scaled for our model. In this case, it should be scaling to that 28 by 28. From here, we're going to print out the list of predictions that comes from that labels.txt we're gonna print out those predictions from that object.output, and that gets zipped up into this list. So for right now, with your OpenMV plugged in, I recommend connecting it. If you get a pop-up asking you to update the firmware, I recommend doing that, and click the play button. You should see the camera start streaming information into this frame window over here and you should see the inference results in your serial terminal. If you don't have a serial terminal, there's a button down here for serial terminal. Feel free to click that. I'm gonna make this a little bigger so we can see what's going on. And if you take this and you can put it over your individual devices. Now, I'm gonna to have to move this camera in and I need a little bit more light, so I'm gonna turn on my desk lamp. So as I move in, you can see resistor here that's taking up, you know, a good portion of the frame there. This is flying by pretty fast, so let's stop this. And you can see resistor coming in at a high probability. 
because of that softmax function, each of these probabilities for background capacitor diode, LED, and resistor should add up to one. The highest one tells you which class it thinks that the input image belongs to. So in this case, resistor is the highest, so it believes that it's looking at a resistor. Let's connect again and try it for a different component. So I'm going to put it over probably the capacitor. So you can see the different inference results as I put the camera over the different components. So in this case, LED should go up. And especially if we have the resistor in the way we took those original images, which looks something like this, or excuse me, I mean this capacitor. If we stop it, sure enough, you can see capacitor has now gone up. So let's do something with this information. Before we print the predictions, both the classes and the prediction values, why don't we print something to this screen just to show it's working? And this will give you an idea of how to use this information to do something. The first thing we're going to do is let's just look for a resistor. Now, you can do this for any number of the classes. And remember that this information comes from object.output. This function returns an array of values that correspond to the prediction results for that particular run of inference. And they're going to be in order of the labels listed here, they're alphabetical order. So background comes first, so that's index zero, index one, two, three, and four. So index four from this array gives us this value here for whatever's in the frame after it goes through inference. We could do an argmax to determine which of those classes had the highest value, but all we want to do here is just see if resistor was spotted. So the trick is to make sure it's over 0.5, because if resistor, if that prediction result is over 0.5, it cannot be, by definition, any other value. The best you could have is, say, 0.49 or 0.499999 for any of the other values or any of the other classes, which means that it still thinks it's a resistor. I like to raise the threshold up a little bit, just to try to avoid some false positives. So I'm going to say 0.6. Feel free to play with that threshold value. And we're going to use the draw string, which comes in OpenMV, to draw on this frame buffer out here, just to let us know what's going on. Obviously, there's no screen on the OpenMV, at least the board by itself. You can buy an LCD backpack, which is kind of neat, and you could draw on there. But for now, let's just draw on here. We're going to put it at 0, 0, which should be the top left corner. And we're going to say resistor found. And let's turn off that mono spacing, I guess, to make it a little nicer. And that's it. Let's connect. Let's start running. You can see the serial terminal giving us results. And as we get close to this resistor and putting it in the right spot, you can see at the top left where it says resistor found. And that's because the resistor looks like the sample images that we took. It's in the right spot. It's in the right shape. It has the right patterns, not really colors because they should all be grayscale, but it should give us a little bit of translation if we move it around, but you'll likely notice this if we move in and out, it loses that resistor found. And that's an, a limitation of these convolutional neural networks. We could train it with better data to move it around, or we can move to something like object detection, which solves some of that problem for us. But for now, we can definitely determine that this is a resistor. I hope this helps give you an idea of how you might use this inference result from doing image classification to do something. And right now we're just drawing a string on our frame output, but this could be turn a light on, sound an alarm, it could be move a robot, whatever it might be, but this is how you would trigger it. You just compare the inference result to a threshold for that particular class and then do something with that data.
If you're interested in learning more about classifying images and object detection, check out the Edge Impulse Computer Vision with Embedded Machine Learning course on Coursera. In it, we cover convolutional neural networks, how we train them with images, and then how to deploy them to a variety of embedded systems.